Hi, John McElroy here, talking all things automotive. And in this video, I want to talk about Tesla's new assembly process that is going to revolutionize how cars are made. Tesla says its next-gen platform is going to slash assembly costs in half, and I believe it. Tesla is going to assemble cars in a way that no one else has ever done before. And it's going to be almost impossible for legacy automakers to catch up to Tesla on this one because their cars will have to be completely redesigned to be manufactured this way. So far, Tesla is the only automaker that designs the car, the manufacturing process, and the assembly plant all at the same time, with the same people working together in the same room, and all reporting to one person. That's not how the legacies do it. Not one of them. I'll get into Tesla's new process in a moment, but first some history about today's moving assembly line and why, and most people don't know this, it's actually very inefficient. Henry Ford is usually given the credit for inventing the moving assembly line, but Henry didn't invent it. In fact, he really wasn't even involved in how it got developed at the Ford Motor Company. If any one person deserves credit for the moving assembly line at Ford, it's a guy named Clarence Avery, whose name has largely been lost to history. He and his team were the ones who figured out how to make it work. They actually got the idea from two different places, grain mills and slaughterhouses. They had observed how grain mills moved grain, like corn and wheat and barley, in buckets on a conveyor line into the mill to get ground down into meal and flour. Same with the slaughterhouses. They observed how the carcasses of animals would travel on conveyors and how workers along the line were tasked with butchering different parts of the animals. So they got the idea to start using conveyors to move parts at Ford's assembly plant in Highland Park, Michigan. They experimented at first with engine parts and magnetos and finally with an entire car. They literally tied a rope to a chassis of a Model T and started winching it across the floor. They put piles of parts along the line and had workers pick up the parts and bolt them on the car. They had stopwatches to do time and motion studies until they finally figured out the right number of parts, the right number of people, and the right speed for the line to move. Amazingly, today's assembly lines pretty much move at the same speed those guys figured out in 1913. The reason why Ford went to the moving assembly line is that it couldn't build cars fast enough. They could build 762 cars a day, but the orders were coming in faster than they could fulfill them. And the assembly line definitely picked up the pace. It slashed the time needed to make a car in half and doubled production. But doing it that way also required a lot more people on the line because a moving assembly line is actually about 33% inefficient. Here's why. In a typical legacy assembly plant, a car rolls off the line every minute. Every 60 seconds, a new one comes off the line. That means each worker on the line has 60 seconds to complete their task. It's the classic division of labor. Each worker has a specific task or tasks to perform walking along the car as it goes by their workstation. And then when they get to the end of their workstation, they have to walk back to the beginning pick up more parts, and start the process all over again. Typically, they have about 40 seconds to do their task and 20 seconds to walk back. Those 20 seconds are waste. There is no value being added to the car as they walk back. And that 20 seconds comes to about 33% of their assembly time. And none of that time is added value. Worse, if they have to climb into the car or reach under the dash, they may only have 10 seconds or so to do their task, which means their inefficient, non-value added time could be as high as 80%. The only way to compensate for that wasted time is to add more people on the line, and that adds more cost. Tesla seems to be the only one that recognizes this inefficiency, and so it wants to put cars together in a completely different way, as it explained in its presentation of its master plan, part three. Today, automakers stamp out panels, weld them together, paint the entire structure, and then install all the components. Tesla doesn't want to do it that way. It's going to take a modular approach. 
First, the left side of the car gets stamped and painted, and so does the right side. Same goes for the closure panels, the doors, hood, and trunk. And those are the only parts of the car that get painted, which eliminates more waste and cost. But then these parts don't get assembled together, not just yet. Because next, the interior parts that go on them get attached. Like the door trim panels, the door seals, the door windows, the hinges, etc. And because the sides of the car and closure panels are separate, it's very easy to install parts on them. Probably a lot of it will be automated. Tesla will still use front and rear giga castings, but now they get assembled as full modules with the powertrain and suspension pieces attached to them, as well as the instrument panel on the front and the trunk on the rear, as well as other components. Again, it's very easy to attach anything to them since they're still separate from the car. So there's even more opportunity for automation. And these sub-assemblies can be fully tested before it all goes together. The floor will be just like they do it today. It's the battery pack with the carpeting, the seats, and the center console mounted on top of it. And now all these modules are finally ready to come together. The sides, the floor, the front and rear modules get put together. I'm guessing with structural adhesives. And then the glass and the closure panels are added. And since these are modules coming together, they may not even need a final assembly line. They could theoretically have multiple final assembly stations. So if one station had to stop for some reason, the rest of them could keep on making cars. On today's legacy assembly lines, if you have a problem in just one station on the final line, the entire line comes to a dead stop. The payoff with Tesla's new approach will be huge. It claims the manufacturing footprint will be 40% smaller, which means they can build new plants faster and with less capex. And it says the cost of assembling a car will get cut in half. This is going to be the key way that Tesla will be able to offer a $25,000 car and still make a tidy profit on it. You know, when Elon and his team unveiled their master plan part three, the media shrugged. It says there wasn't any news there. Most of the investment analysts said it was a big nothing burger and Tesla's stock fell 8% as soon as the presentation ended. But I don't know what they were thinking about. To me, this was one of the most informative automotive presentations I've ever seen in my career. And if Tesla can pull off this new assembly process, it's going to be the most significant change in automotive assembly since those guys at Ford tied a rope onto the chassis of a Model T in 1913 and started winching it across the floor.